All right, guys, here it is, video coming at you. Uh, it's been a while, but today's video, I'm gonna be installing some Swift spec R loading springs um, on my Dodge Durango. I'll be installing uh, B Woody's full suspension, got the tow bar, control arm, and a sway bar link, and I'll be deleting the low leveling shocks. I got a set of Bilstein 5100 series here. You see here's the bump stop. Cut it down already, just to make sure we're good with clearance lock washer and the retainer all right here's the part you're going to need if you're going to delete it and the shock of course a shock boot so to keep all the dust out these are the parts that will be going on these are all the tools you're going to need all right so here anti-seize you're going to need that for your b woody's bushings of course grease gun uh for the fittings uh because i did get the b woody's with the grease fittings all right knife utility knife you never know but i use this to cut down the bump stops you might need it for something else i'm not sure uh of course your your torque wrench you're gonna need that 250 pound torque wrench uh because i will be doing the rear and the front i already did the one on the other side um can't really show you but i'll go over there and just take a look at it um because that one is done already <clears throat> you will need 22 millimeter 21 19 18 17 15 and 13 impact sockets um that's for everything you'll see all the nuts you'll be bolts you'll be taking off of this um from there a couple extensions uh they help to get into some of the spots that are tight universal a 15 mil wrench 18 mil wrench a 19 mil wrench uh 15 16 this one is for your shock nut and then this one in, uh, an adjustable just in case you need it <coughs> hammer and you're always gonna have to pound some nuts or some bolts or something and some tin snips for cutting off this part right here the connector uh that holds this <coughs> you have to Take it off, cut it. You guys will see the, the, the video of it all. Um, of course, WD-40. Uh, I already hit all my points with WD-40. Let them sit for probably about 30, 40 minutes. That way it's easy to take off. And of course, you're gonna need jack stands. And you're also going to need a jack. So these are some of the parts you're gonna need. All right, uh, last thing I, I forgot to cover is uh, I got a Hercules midsize impact here and a Hercules just driver impact. Um, so far, this thing right here has been well worth its weight in gold. Um, I haven't had any issues. Um, the shock is torqued down, torque spec is 173 feet pounds, and this busts the other side loose like it was pretty pretty easy to do um you'll see you'll see the video uh i'm gonna video the whole process and then you guys can dissect speed up slow down to whatever it is you want to see so uh here's the other side like i said it's already all down um i had to jack up the actual lower control arm it's all on here and in that way it would all fit so you guys see everything's up there To get the tire back on i had a jack up right here just to get the tire on because this thing's so uncompressed but we'll drive it around after we get the other side on uh get it all settled and see what the right high looks like
where you need your tin snips. Make that cut. That cut. And last cut. This part is trash. Throw it away. You will hang on to this and preserve that. So for the shock, we're going to hit it with a 21. Alright, on this side, 21. On the other side, we got a 15 16. Like I said, this thing torqued down to 173 pounds. You'll reuse this as well. <clears throat> Most of the hardware here you're going to reuse. Right here. Let's pop off our speed sensor here. The other side was easier. Body side and lower control arm, or I'm sorry for the adjustable control control arm. You're gonna use a 19 and a 17 or 19 and a 15. Whatever. Take off something else before we get there. All right, right here you're back to an 18. So I'm not replacing this one, but taking this out helps get it all out. My what? My booty's in the way? All right. Keep these, or you're gonna get new hardware with the other shock. Push that down. And this shock will come right up and out and over as such. Now you'll see some people absolutely struggle with that, and the reason why is because all the suspension pieces are still connected. That's why it's extremely hard to get out. I'm not reusing that, don't worry. Additionally, like I said, push down, and this spring will naturally just kind of fall out. I need to get this damn thing off, though. Hang on.
some troubles at first. The reason why this bushing busted and all that grease came out. And it was causing my vice grip here just to slip. <coughs> but we're good now. Finally got it all off. Let's get it out. There we go. Alright, we're not gonna use this. These are trash. Don't need these bolts either. They're trash. Or these nuts, I should say. Alright, so now, tow bar's out, upper control arm, other stabilizing arm, um, sway bar end links, all out. Just drop it down, the spring will fall right out. Just like that. Spring had no chance. Alright, save the top. Save, oh, where'd the bottom go? There it is. Save the bottom. Alright, you're going to use them again. So, they should slide for the most part right out. Okay, as such, those will be saved. That's trash. <coughs> now, let's go get this upper control arm out of here. Once again, right here, we're at 15. Now we got some more working room now. Here it goes. Take this watch off. Again, save the hardware. You're gonna need it. I really hope this is working. This video is getting it off. What's up, girl? All right, you just can't touch all my stuff, okay? I'm working, I'm working hard. All right, give me some. <laughs> my girl. All right, so one thing you're gonna have to do, you have to pop off sway bar to get to the toe arm all right not a big deal and the sway bar is a 19 no, no but not but all right that's how i get all dirty okay i'm buying <laughs> yep loud huh pull your exhaust down a little Hitting this side does nothing. Oh. You gotta hit this side to get it off. Oh, oh boy. That's a dummy, ain't it, honey? Oh. And the reason why is because you see. Let me get it off. See that right here? This was acting as a lock against the frame. What? So, learn the hard oh. way. Good to go though. Um, we're good. There it is. Okay. Okay. So, got the good old instructions right here from B. Woody's. And let's go ahead and turn it and to the tow bar. So, you'll notice for the tow bar, 
to the cradle, 62, to the knuckle, 79. Too easy. Um, and you'll notice that your 45 degree here is the Durland side. If you're not sure which side is your Durland side, um, it's a much stiffer bushing. Tap it on the ground. There's no bounce. Now take it to the other side and where your regular polyurethane bushing is and bounce that. There's a lot more bounce. So the Durland bushing isn't as bouncy. The polyurethane bushing is a lot more bouncy. The polyurethane bushing will go down to the knuckle, Durland side, get with the 45 degree Hey, uh, grease point to the bottom, and we'll stuff it right up in there. All right, the uh, liberal of this stuff. All right, you don't need a whole bunch. Just need enough to get the job done. Yeah, let me in, let me in. Wow, oh, you're in the way, you're in the way. Yo, mom's gonna be so mad. You know mom's gonna be mad, right? You're filthy. Just a little bit before you start hammering them down with your impact to make sure you're not cross threading these things. move that so impact put it down about 110 feet pounds same thing with this one I don't want to dig in too much to the impact though It's a little tricky. So you're gonna have to get a socket to hold this 18 mil nut, but then you're gonna have to go get a six mil uh, with an impact or impact driver and impact uh, uh, hex adapter to get into that little hole right there to actually tighten these down. Because just like another video I've seen, when you start, okay. Such. I might have to go with a smaller one though. I don't know if this will get down in there. Oh, it does. Okay. So, and you'll have to do this in reverse, okay? If you don't do it in reverse, it'll never tighten up. And you'll notice it's actually tightening. So, this is hard to do if you don't have the right equipment, but it's doable.
says 60, I think one pounds, something like that. I uh, just ratcheted the hell out of it. And, and we're gonna call that good. We're gonna call Top. Some people say they don't use the plate. Some people say they do use the plate. Use it if you want to. Don't use it if you want to. I'm gonna use it just because it's looks like it makes it a little more sturdy. So. There it is. Boom. And it's on. leave the bottom loose but we're gonna go ahead and torque down the top the top is 48 feet pounds I'm correction sorry this will be a 13 because the hardware they support providing these are a little smaller than the stock ones I'll get these super tight just enough to cinch them down what about the first impact I stop on the shock absorber because I don't want to <clears throat> potentially strip it out. and smack in this spring we get all buttoned up and it gets too tight to get in there so you'll see right here too easy right smack it on and it lines up right here just at that little bump stops area same thing for this side okay here you got two clips the clips kind of hold it and keep it down in here like this all right but once you actually have load on the vehicle it's not going anywhere. And then right here, same thing on this side. You just go ahead until you hit that little bump stop area right there. And that's it. Best part of all. I'm about to tighten this one back up a little bit. Like I said, you don't need to drown it. Just enough to prolong the bushing's life. Tighten any of those down super tight. It's just enough to get it all buttoned up. Okay, it's tight enough. There it is. A little hammer. Boom. There we go. Go ahead and hit that. I'm gonna torque that down right now while I got it there, just because it's easier when everything's out of the way. It's all right. I'll let that eat for a little bit, just kind of see what this thing can do as far as torquing something down. So we'll find out. I think I let that eat for a little bit. Alright, let's see. Get this out of the way. Push it 
much. That's it, right. That's it, got it down almost to about 170 feet pounds. Almost, probably a little short. I think it easily, easily got it to 150. So, about 150 feet pounds of torque down power, something like that. So I was letting it eat and it stopped spinning, so. Okay, shock absorber is on. Looking good. Bit of some play right there. Put that bump stop. Like I said, we cut a little bit off that bump stop, remember? Just to give us that, uh, I don't know, I'd say half to three quarters inch right there. A little more room. I think for 18 minutes, thing's almost dead. Man, that didn't last long. That's about what you see right now. So, uh, this thing's about to die. I'm gonna finish buttoning this up, and then I'll show you what's uh, what it did. Okay, uh, but right remember, so. Control arm is going to go here. You're going to put this pot right here. That way, you got some room clearance for the body. You might have to cut the body, but I didn't have to. Remember, you don't know what side it is? Tap it on the ground. Durlin side stiff. Polyurethane squishy. Polyurethane side goes to the knuckle. Durlin side goes to the body. All right. Always remember that. And uh, remember, anti seize on all of them. Same thing here. We're gonna put our uh, sway bar in links right here, and uh, anti seize on all of them. Just prolong the life of those, and uh, we'll uh, show you what all this looks like when it's all buttoned up. So button up this, button up the control arm, button up the sway bar is lead. Put the wheel back on, take it for a cruise, and let it all uh, level up. All right, guys, so you can see everything's here and everything's put back together. Uh, I'm going to walk you through kind of the process of what I did uh, piece by piece to put it back together. So first thing I did here is I went ahead and input the shock. You'll notice you still have your top piece and you still have your bottom uh, top and bottom isolators. Um, next thing I did is I put the shock together. The top in, kind of reconnected the top, but I left the bottom bolt uh out the top piece is 48 feet pounds every remember there's two nuts there <clears throat> from there i put on the toe toe bar uh to the cradle is 64 feet pounds and to the <coughs> knuckle is 74 feet pounds um the next one i put on was the <coughs> front arm here i'm not sure what this arm is called um but this nut bolt right here is torqued down to 74 feet pounds as well um from this front arm i put on the adjustable control arm the adjustable control arm to the cradle you see right there is 64 feet pounds and then right here is 70 yeah 64 feet pounds and this one right here is 74 feet pounds. You notice the nipples are up, all right? <clears throat> and also on the tow bar, you notice the nipples are up. And then if you can see the nipple, it's right there. That one's up as well. <clears throat> now from here, the last thing I had to put on was this sway arm. Um, I didn't put this on yet. I went in and put the shock in, and completely installed the shock. And the shock bottom bolt room is torqued down to 173 feet pounds. Um, lastly, <clears throat> was I put on the sway bar end links, and the sway bar end links, both the top and the bottom, are torqued down to 85 feet pounds, according to the B Woody's installation instructions. Um, once again, you'll have to have your shock or your jack right under here on the lower control arm uh, to play with that height. Uh, in order to make this easy to get the bolts to go through uh, they can be a little complicated if you don't have that jack under there to play with it um and that is basically 
it on how to put this thing back together. Um, you'll notice that here, <clears throat> here's my speed sensor. It's just uh, got two zip ties down to the control arm. Oh, for this control arm, make sure you put this. You see how it's see how it's kind of canted down like that. If you flip this thing, this part of the control arm is gonna bang right there on your frame. Don't do that. Otherwise, you're just gonna have to rip it all apart and do it again. Um, and then here, I also got zip ties for the uh, e-brake bracket and holder right there. <coughs> and that is that is it as far as putting this thing back together. Uh, super simple, not hard to do. Um, also, um, just in case you don't remember, down here, back in here, remember you gotta drop this sway bar to get to the bolt for the toe arm that goes to the cradle. All right, if, remember if you don't, if you accidentally cinch it back up, you're gonna have to loosen it back up just to get that bolt back in. Um, that's it, and let's go ahead and do the front. All right, guys, so I had some technical difficulties with the camera when doing the front, so I didn't capture any footage of actually going through the process, but that's fine, you don't need to watch the process because i'm going to walk you through it on exactly how to do it um how i did it um bobby i've straight up <clears throat> some people they don't take all of this off like your upper control arm bolt here your lower control arm bolt and all that stuff they don't take that stuff off i'm going to show you what i did and how it worked best for me so <clears throat> Let's get it started. All right, first and foremost, um, get you something that you can set this brake caliper on because you're, I took this off. Some people, I don't know if they take it off, but I took it off. Um, <clears throat> there's two star bolts right here in the back. You got one right there and you have one down at the bottom. I think I just smacked a 16 millimeter um, socket on it, <clears throat> took it right off. Um, just get you like a little stand, a little milk, milk crate, milk carton or something like that. Milk crate, um, put it right here and you'll be good to go. Uh, cause you don't want tension on this line with it just hanging there. All right. So once you get this off, next thing you're going to do is you're going to take off the caliper. Or I'm sorry, the, the rotor. And then to take this off, the only thing you have to do is there's a little rubber ring right here. Get a little screwdriver or like a screwdriver pick if you got one, but a screwdriver will be fine. Take this out <clears throat> and then just set it wherever you want. If you have a chair like this, just set it down there. That way you don't lose any of your parts. This rotor will slide right off. <clears throat> From there, the next thing I did is you want to take off your axle hub bolt. This is a 32 millimeter, okay? This is torqued down to 230 four pounds I believe uh, based off what the specs say and where'd it go I don't know where it is at now oh there it is <clears throat> and this little guy right here busted it right off all right didn't have any issues once again I did use WD-40 on all my points I took off the tire rod okay so right here the tire rod I believe is a 21 millimeter you're gonna need a 21 millimeter to get this off <clears throat> And once you get that off, just once again, take the, take the nut, put it right where you're gonna use, uh, put the rest of your stuff so you have it for later. Next thing I did was I took off um, the upper control arm. All right, so this bolt right here, once again, it is a 21 millimeter. This 21 mil comes right off. Um, take this off save it for later then move down to the bottom here and you see the this nut right here for your lower control arm that one is a 24 millimeter so you'll need a 24 millimeter to get that one off okay <clears throat> all right to wrap this up just a recap 16 21 21 and then a 24 on the bottom all right once all that's off <clears throat> good to go it really opens this up so you can actually start working and getting to things uh next thing i did was i took 
the lower shock bolt out. That is a 27 millimeter. So you'll need a 27 millimeter for this, okay? <clears throat> Next, I took off the sway bar end links. Uh, I don't know what B. Woody supplies here for these. I'm not sure. Uh, this one, the top one, you will reuse the top OEM bolt hardware on your sway bar end links, okay? B. Woody supplies the bottom one. So, <clears throat> nothing there. And also, when you supply this, the actual crooked part will be at the bottom. I think it's at the bottom. Yeah, so you'll you'll notice uh, it's kind of canted in this way. Um, just know that the nipple, if you get the grease fittings, nipple's got to be forward on both left and right side. Um, so there is a certain way to put these on. Um, <clears throat> however, if you look, you can see the angles and the angles need to face towards the interior or towards the motor um but anyway i can't remember what these are right here to take these off um uh, for oem some socket probably 18 19 i want to say it was probably a 19 uh, but i can't remember completely um so so once you have all that off all of this will move out of the way <clears throat> Your shock right here will be wiggly, nice and loose. Um, and then you'll have to take out your axle right here. No worries. Just literally pull on this axle. Give it a little tug. If it doesn't come, give it a little more pressure. All right, and keep doing that until it comes out because it literally pops right out. And if you don't take this axle, uh, CV axle out, it will never, uh, the lower arms here of this shock mount will never clear this axle so you can get this shock off okay so <clears throat> that's that um and if you do those steps you're gonna be good to go you also have to do some disconnecting and connecting of some uh points right here with some lines no big deal let's pop the hood real quick <clears throat> All right, once you got all that out, you'll come up here and you'll loosen up these three. One, two, three. These are the upper shock mounts, okay? I think these are a 13 millimeter, I do believe 11 or 13, something like that. <clears throat> once again, just a small socket, nothing nothing crazy here. Um, and these are torqued down to, I believe, 25 feet pounds. So, not a big deal. <clears throat> all right. Once you have the top off, all of this out of the way, this shock, you can then pull out, all right? Once you pull the shock out, you'll see this piece right here. You're gonna need some coil spring compressors, okay? Like some people say you can do it, some people say you can't. I did mine, no issues, okay? Um, I didn't have any issues at all compressing my spring and getting the old one off and getting the new one off. However, though, if you do not have something like this you're probably going to struggle and you are going to be torquing with a wrench or probably going through an impact hammer because it took it still took quite a while even with this medium impact to get the springs <clears throat> compressed enough to get the top off okay um i'm sorry to um, loosen up the top bolt that you see right there okay so that top bolt right there it was a it was a real mofo it really was um and also a little bit of issue i had here with uh this top nut is i had to leave a little tension on the spring to get this to come otherwise it would break free and it would just keep spinning with the shock okay so you might have to leave a little tension. You might not have to leave a little tension. So now once you take this off, you got the spring out, you're good to go. Everything's off. Now you just want to reverse the order. First things first is put your spring on, put your new um, Swift spring on, Swift Spec R spring on. Same concept. Compress it with your uh, coil spring compressors. Put it on. And then you'll notice that um, <clears throat> when you put this on, so and you'll have to make sure that these two are facing towards the front of the vehicle and then this one is towards the rear. Otherwise, 
you'll never get this thing on. It's pretty difficult if you don't really line it up when you're doing this in the process of getting the spring on before you actually stick it up there. <clears throat> but that's not a big deal. It's super easy. Um, once it's in and it's up there, first thing you'll do is you'll tighten these down. And like I said, these are 25 feet pounds right here. This, uh, when you tighten it down, uh, I can't remember what that torque done, but man, I just torqued it down as hard as I could uh, with my impact. <clears throat> not my, not my uh, medium impact, but my impact hammer. It's in. And then you literally just repeat the process of how you took it off. I went slightly different. The um, When you do put this in though, when you put your shock in, you do have to have your axle kind of already positioned, be positioned between the clevis here. Cause if you don't have it positioned between this clevis, you can't fit the axle in through the clevis, uh, the lower mount here on this shock. So see the axle in between and you'll be good to go. <coughs> and for this axle, it literally just pushes into place. Okay. Give it a push. If it doesn't go in, push a little harder and repeat the process until it goes in. It goes in, I promise you. Um, and then from there, <clears throat> first thing I did is I reattached the lower shock bracket, or uh, short, lower shock bolt. That was 173 feet pounds. <clears throat> from there, I got the, uh, from there I did the upper control arm and this 21 that was 74 feet pounds all right next thing next one i did was the lower uh control arm <clears throat> that one is 173 pounds so you'll need to make sure you have a pretty good torque wrench after that i did the tie rod this one was again 74 uh it was like 70 feet pounds <laughs> Then I put on the, then the next thing I did is I put the rotor on, okay? I or, 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 didn't put the rotor on. I put the nut on right here for my CV axle, okay? Remember this gets torqued back down to like 235 feet pounds, okay? So you need a pretty good wrench. Um, I used, once again, the medium impact. And I took it nearly all the way um, to about 200 feet pounds. And I only had to turn it probably an eighth of a rotation maybe for it to crack at 232 or 235. Um, after I put that on, then I put the rotor on. I re-secured the rubber pin right here, or the rubber grommet right here that holds the rotor on. <clears throat> From there, I put the caliper back on. And once again, that's just a 16 mil here at the top and at the bottom. And I believe these are like a hundred and some odd feet pounds. I can't remember exactly what it is. I'll have to look it up again. <clears throat> Last but not least, I put on the sway bar end links, okay? Like there's plenty of room to work here when it's all back together. So that's why I kind of put these on last. And also when I had it together, this would all stay up using, cause I had to use the jack to keep this all up um to where i could get it all back together once it was all back together then i could take my jack and now i can put it here underneath the sway bar to now push the sway bar up and down on where i needed it to go uh because once again it's pretty difficult if you don't do that <clears throat> and then these get torqued down top and bottom to 115 feet pounds um after you do that i mean that's that's basically it um, oh, the one thing I didn't cover was the bump stop. Uh, you'll have to cut your bump stop. Let's see, I don't have a bump stop on me. But <clears throat> there's two. You can either take that much off the bump stop. You can go to just the first one, or you can go to the first and the second and cut off the bump stop. And then after that, it's nothing to it, but do it. Just put the tire back on torque your wheels back down to 110 115 feet pounds per on the lug nut and then you'll be good to go stay tuned like subscribe guys come back i'll have some more content for you guys